Greetings everyone. You're watching the channel Aviation Obsession. Hey there, aviation enthusiasts. Here's a mind-blowing fact to kickstart our video. Did you know that the Boeing 777 rewrote the history of aircraft design? It became the very first commercial jet to be entirely crafted on a computer, no mock-ups needed. Now, that's what I call a game changer. This aircraft, Boeing's best-selling widebody, was launched in 1994 and is now in its third generation with the new 777X. It was designed in the 1990s to take advantage of twin-engine performance improvements. The 777X takes this even further as the largest twin-jet aircraft ever to fly. So, in this video, let's dive into the story of the Boeing 777 family. But before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos. Without further ado, let's get started. The Boeing 777 came about as a new aircraft to fill the gap between the 767 and the 747. In the 1980s, Boeing had a range of planes, from the 737 to the 747. The jumbo jet dominated long-haul routes because twin jets faced restrictions until 1985, when ETOPS rules changed, enabling the 767 and 757 to efficiently operate on transatlantic routes. The 767 excelled on shorter routes, but there was a demand for a higher-capacity twin-engine aircraft. Airbus introduced the A330 in 1992, which was the largest twinjet at the time. However, Boeing chose to innovate further, moving away from upgrading the 767 and instead creating the entirely new 777 in response to airlines' desires for a wider fuselage and improved operating efficiency. Boeing kicked off the 777 project in 1989, and by 1994, the first one was in the air, entering airline service in 1995. This bird was the result of some serious teamwork with eight airlines, all Nippon Airways, American Airlines, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Delta Air Lines, Japan Airlines, United Airlines, and Qantas. Everyone except Qantas ended up placing orders for this beauty. This collaboration allowed for tailored capacities, specifications, and various versions. Notably, it was Boeing's first aircraft to heavily rely on computer design, marking a leap forward in aircraft development. It was built at Boeing's Everett facility, and they had to expand it big time, adding two new production lines. Actually, all widebodies before the 787 were crafted there. What's interesting is that they farmed out a bunch of work to other companies, even international ones. But hang on, this outsourcing concept got even bigger with the 787. For the original 777, the parts they outsourced were smaller and more manageable, unlike the Dreamliner, where they ship entire composite fuselage sections and wings from overseas using those gigantic Boeing Dreamlifters. Speaking of construction, it was a global effort. In Japan, Mitsubishi and Kawasaki Heavy Industries tackled fuselage panels. Fuji Heavy Industries handled the aircraft center wing section. Down in Australia, Aerospace Technologies of Australia worked on the rudder, and Hawker de Havilland took care of the elevators. Boeing eventually gobbled up both of these Australian companies. The very first 777, known as the 777-200, was the smaller version designed to cater to US airlines. It took its maiden commercial flight with United Airlines on June 7, 1995. Then we've got the Dash 200ER, known for its impressive range and payload, which British Airways introduced in February 1997. Last but not least, there's the Dash 300, featuring a stretched fuselage with an additional 32 feet, and Cathay Pacific proudly showcased it in May 1998. By 1997, Boeing had received 323 orders from 25 airlines for the 777. It was already a big hit. Boeing has always had dreams of boosting the 777's range. Initially, they considered making a smaller, long-haul version by shortening the Dash 200, kind of like the 747 SP, but that plan was scrapped. Instead, they opted to keep the capacity and extend the range. In the late 90s, they began work on the next-gen 777. They stuck with the same fuselage and cockpit design but stretched out the wingspan by almost 13 feet. Plus, they swapped out the engines for those fresh GE90s. So, unlike the first generation, there was no more engine choice. The superstar of this generation was the 777-300ER, which hit the scene in 2004. It basically combined the size of the Dash 300 with the range of the Dash 200ER by beefing up the max takeoff weight, and they also made the fuselage and landing gear stronger. This version was a perfect fit for long-haul routes, and it's now the most popular 777 out there. In 2006, the ultra-long-range Dash 200LR joined the crew. It kept the same length as the Dash 200 but borrowed the cool upgrades from the Dash 300ER, which allowed for more weight. With extra fuel tanks, 
It could soar nearly 10,000 miles. It kicked things off with Pakistan International Airlines but didn't exactly steal the show, with only 60 of these birds delivered. The issue? Well, it actually had too much range. It achieved that impressive range through extra fuel, which made it heavy and costly to operate on long routes. As part of this second-gen rollout, Boeing also introduced the 777F freighter model. It capitalized on the upgraded engines and higher maximum takeoff weight to carry hefty cargo. What's significant here is that its maximum payload was just a smidge lower than the 747-200F, making it a solid choice for replacing older Boeing freighters. Together, the 777 and 747 solidified Boeing's position in the freighter market. But Airbus is aiming to shake things up with its A350 freighter, and it's gaining some traction in terms of orders. But wait, the 777 story isn't over yet. The 777X is in the testing phase and is set to hit the skies in the coming years. It's going to be the biggest and most high-capacity twin-engine aircraft ever. The idea for this aircraft was first floated in 2011, with a goal to start flying in 2018. It's like a larger, more efficient successor to the Dash 300ER. It still shares plenty of DNA with its 777 family members and brings some cool new features to the table. Importantly, it sticks with the same metal fuselage construction. Now, let's dive into the thrilling details of the 777X. It shares the same fuselage as its predecessors but has been widened by roughly 4 inches through some clever engineering tricks like thinner walls and better insulation. If all goes as planned, we'll be looking at two versions of this plane, Firstly, the 777-9, and a smaller sibling, the 777-8. The Dash 9, which takes the lead, can pack in a whopping 426 passengers in a two-class setup. With a length of 249 feet, it's officially the longest commercial jet around. Now, the Dash 8, if it gets the green light, will hold about 384 travelers. It's set to go head-to-head -head with the A350-1000. But the 777-9 is a bit of a game-changer in the twin-engine world, bringing twinjets much closer to those big quadjets. Now, here's where the 777-X gets seriously fascinating. It's all about efficiency, capacity, and range, thanks to some new engines and larger wings. Speaking of these engines, we're talking about the biggest and most powerful ones yet. The General Electric GE9X engine is a beast with its carbon fiber build and fewer fan blades to keep weight down despite its larger size. After a few delays, these engines finally got the nod from the FAA in September 2020. Now, let's talk wings. It has some impressive wings, and they're crucial for its performance and efficiency. But here's the twist, large wings can be a hassle at many airports, a headache the A380 knows all too well. But the 777X has a trick up its sleeve, folding wingtips. These babies fold when they're on the ground, shrinking their wingspan by about 16 feet. This means it can fit into lower aerodrome categories and spread its wings, pun intended, to more airports. Now, let's talk about the hiccups in the 777X journey. It's faced a few setbacks during development, like those pesky engine issues and structural testing delays. The pandemic didn't help either, throwing a wrench in the works. Boeing initially aimed for it to be an airline service by 2021, but that plan keeps shifting. Right now, it's going through the paces in test flights. In January 2021, Boeing dropped the bombshell that the first delivery wouldn't happen until late 2023. Even Sir Tim Clark, the president of Emirates, chimed in, saying the program was in a bit of disarray and hinting that we might not see it until 2025. As things stand in the making of this video, we're looking at the 777X taking to the skies in early 2025, but remember, this could change again in the future. Boeing unveiled a 777X freighter in January 2022, set to debut around 2027 with Lufthansa and Qatar Airways on board. And there's more, they're eyeing a Dash 10X expansion for potentially 450 passengers, pending airline demand and Airbus moves with the A350. Boeing hasn't spilled the beans on this officially yet, as they're focusing on getting the 777-9 service debut. With over 2200 orders so far, the Boeing 777 has been a superstar in the widebody world. But guess what? We're just getting started with its next generation, plenty more to come. And that's a wrap for today. Thanks a million for tuning in. If you found this video as fascinating as we did, don't be shy, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe. And hey, if you've got some cool topics in mind for our next video, drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.